All right, my check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hopefully you're all doing well. The name, of course, is Jason Joseph. This is Play by Play with JJ. Wow. All right, so today it is April 11th, and we are getting ready to start off another series uh, in regards to the Phillies. They are taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. They're on a four-game uh, series that will be played against them that will start tonight, and hopefully the weather St- uh, hopefully it doesn't rain. Hopefully it does not rain at all whatsoever, but the clouds are not looking too friendly outside. But the series does start tonight, and we have an interesting matchup between Ranger Suarez, and, it'll, and he will be taking on Jared Jones. We'll get more in-depth with it in a little bit. I do want to go over the starting lineups, though, because first pitch is about ready to get underway. In just about three minutes or so. So for the Pittsburgh Pirates, it'll be Connor Joe over at first base. There's Brian Reynolds, who's the left fielder for tonight's game. Cabrian Hayes playing over at third. Edward Olivares is uh, out in right field. Andrew McCutcheon is the DH, and he's batting fifth. In the lineup, Michael A. Taylor, the center fielder, hitting sixth. And then it's O'Neill Cruz batting seventh over at shortstop. Jared Triolo will be the second baseman hitting eighth and batting ninth. It's Henry Davis to round things out in the lineup. He's catching behind the plate. And on the mound is Jared Jones. So again, for the Pirates, they got Connor Joe, Brian Reynolds, Cabrian Hayes, Edward Olivares, Andrew McCutcheon, Michael Taylor, Michael E. Taylor, that is, O'Neill Cruz, Jared Triolo, and Henry Davis. So they are... The ground screws out there, and they're just making sure that the mound uh, looks looks good, and they're trying to get everything all level, and that's what they're doing. So they just went into a commercial break, but yes, yeah, so Ranger has to have a big day today. He pitched really well in his last outing against the Washington Nationals, um, but in regards to just his pitching performance, the last time that he faced the Pittsburgh Pirates, he actually allowed six earned runs. And that was in September of last year. Only lasted four and two-thirds of an inning. And it was not a good outing by him at all whatsoever. Left a lot of pitches that were up in the zone. uh, Got behind in a lot of counts. And just could not locate his fastballs and his breaking pitches um, in the correct spots of the strike zone. So he needs to definitely do that today. And the offense hopefully can uh, give him a little bit of a boost as well. Uh, the, the, the Phillies, as a team, they have had 16 consecutive singles. And they, of course, yesterday, uh, th- when they played against the St. Louis Cardinals, they had all singles in that game. You want to see them try to get some extra base hits, but that was just something that really stood out to me about yesterday's game and just about the hitting in general is that the pop hasn't really been showing, and we kind of figured that it was going to take them a little bit of time for them to wake up the bats. But uh, the fact that they've had 16, that their last 16 hits have all been singles is just absolutely mind-boggling to me because that's something that we really didn't expect. Temperatures are at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are blowing at 15 miles per hour. And we're just about ready to get underway for some evening baseball on Thursday, April 11th. As far as the Pittsburgh Pirates go, well, they have the best record in baseball. The Pirates have uh, a 9-3 record. They are 6-1 on the road. They started off the season really strong and have uh, gotten off to a very hot start. They took on the Miami Marlins to start off the season, and then they played against the Washington Nationals. They swept the Marlins and then uh, won two out of three against Washington, and then won the series against the Baltimore Orioles as well, and were able to split two games against the Detroit Tigers. So we're going into the top of the first inning, and there's Ranger Suarez on the mound in two starts this season. He has a 1-0 record. He's gone 11 innings, has a 4.09 ERA, and 11 strikeouts and one walk to go along with that as well. Is my chat working? Um, or do we just, uh, okay, we have 12 people on here. Okay, all right. I wanted to make sure that the chat was working because usually we get a lot of people on here, and I was a little bit worried that that that, that wasn't going to be the case. So Connor Joe, again, will be leading things off. 
for the Pirates as we're getting ready to just get started at Citizens Bank Park. Connor Joe's over at first. Brian Reynolds, the left fielder, batting second. Cabrian Hayes over at third, hitting third. Edward Olivares in the cleanup spot out in right field, batting fourth. Andrew McCutcheon is the DH, batting fifth. Sixth is Michael A. Taylor, who's out in center field. And then it's O'Neill Cruz, the shortstop, batting seventh. Jared Triolo hitting eighth, and he's the second baseman for tonight's game. And Henry Davis will round things up. He's batting ninth. What's up, Zach? Let's go, boys. See you on Sunday. <laughs> yep. Are you talking about uh, see you on Sunday? I don't know what you mean about that. But Connor Joe is stepping up to the box. Again, the Phillies are in their powder blue uniforms. A lot of dark clouds in the sky out in center field. It looks like it is going to storm. But let's hope that th- that uh, this uh, that Mother Nature has other plans. First pitch is in there for a strike over on the outside corner. All right. And the Pirates are in their black and yellow tops with the jersey letter just underneath the right side of the text. And they have the gray bottoms with the yellow stripe. The 0-1 is in there for a strike. Connor Joe batting 324 on the season. Ranger gets set, kicks, deals, and he throws a curveball that's low for ball one. You'll be at the game on Sunday. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Joe's had a pretty good season leading off for the Pirates as he'll pop this one out over towards the shallow center field side. Stock gets underneath it, though, and he just touches the grass, and he'll make the catch, and there's one away. So three pitches or four pitches from Ranger Suarez, and he's able to get the first out. That's Connor Joe, his first victim. And now Brian Reynolds will be coming up to the plate. Reynolds, in the last series, went three for nine with two runs scored and a double as well. And he swings and misses at the cutter that was inside, and the count is 0-1. He's batting 1.347, or sorry, he has a 1.347 OPS versus left-handed pitching this season. That's top five in baseball. The 0-1 swing and a miss. So, no balls, two strikes. We'll get to uh, the Phillies infield and one through nine in just a few moments on the defensive side of the diamond as the 0-2 is inside for ball one. On the mound, it's Ranger Suarez. Behind the plate, his partner in crime is JT Realmuto. And then, of course, over at first base, you got Harper, Stott, Bohm, and Trey that are all in the infield. Stott's at second, Bohm's at third, and Trey's at short. And from uh, left to right, it's Merrifield, Marsh, and Castellanos. The one-two on the way. Good take by Reynolds. Just a hair down low. So it's a two-ball, two-strike count to Brian Reynolds. One out, nobody on. We're in the top of the first inning. Connor Joe popped out the second, the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a foul ball. Brian Hayes waits in the on-deck circle. What's up, Asia? What's going on? How you doing? Thanks so much for being here, as always. Suarez gets set at the letters, lines up and delivers, and that's chopped foul towards the third base dugout. Again, the weather not really looking it's not really looking too nice over at Citizens Bank Park. It's not raining just yet, but there's a lot of dark clouds in the sky when you look out towards uh, the center field alleyway. The 2-2 on the way from Ranger. Then there's a line drive out to right field. Castellanos on the run over towards his left side, and I'll make the catch. Actually just took about maybe five steps or so. And there's two down in this... Uh, Top of the first inning. So here's Cabrian Hayes. Hayes hitting 313 on the season with six RBI and a 375 slugging percentage. Ranger gets set and he throws the first pitch low for a ball. Crew chief for tonight, you got Hunter Wendelstadt at the plate calling the balls and the strikes. John Tempain over at first, Nick Marley at second, and the 1-0 is inside for ball two. And then Marvin Hudson is the third base umpire for tonight's game. 13 pitches in this first inning so far by Ranger. 
Two up, two down. Two balls, no strikes to Hayes. And the pitch. It's in there for a strike at the knees. Good 91-mile-per-hour sinker. You're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of sinkers and a lot of really good off-speed pitches from Ranger if he's uh, able to get a good grip on his uh, pitches today. The 2-1, he goes with a sinker that's inside and heading towards the dirt. The count is 3-1. and one. So Cabrian Hayes is now 27 years old from Tomball, Texas. He was the first-round pick of the 2015 draft by the Pirates. And he'll foul the next pitch off as Ranger threw a fastball right down Broadway. Huh. So the count is now full at 3-2. and two. There's Derek Shelton, who's in his fifth season as the Pirates manager. He has a 407 winning percentage during those five seasons. The 3 2 on the way just misses outside for ball four. Went with a curveball at 79 miles per hour. And Cabrian Hayes is the first guy aboard in this series. Edward Oliveris will step into the box, batting on the right side. Three homers, seven RBI. And a 321 average for him on the season. First pitch, it's a little dribbler, but it's actually fouled off the foot of Oliveris. And JT is just going to throw that back towards the dugout. Ugh. You're rooting against the Knicks tonight. It's a long story. <laughs> it's a long story. The 0-1 on the way. It's low. It was a curveball at 76 miles per hour. Mm. So, Connor Joe popped out to second. Brian Reynolds, he lined out to right, and Cabrian Hayes just walked two outs and Bray and Hayes over at first. Ranger looks back, and the pitch. Line drive out to left field on the run, though, and making the catch is Merrifield, and he just catches it just in front of the track. He didn't even turn over his shoulder, just backpedaled and made a pretty good catch. Oliveras had a good hit, though, but... Just into the hands of Whit Merrifield for out number three. No runs. One man left. And we go to the bottom of the first. Phillies coming up to bat. No score so far in this game. Wish I could have ended that a little bit better. But regardless, that's that is what it is. All right. Yeah, all right, so the name is Jason Joseph. This is Play by Play with JJ. I appreciate you guys so much for being here. Hopefully you're all doing well and having yourselves a very fantastic day. Um, yeah. Am I rooting against the Knicks tonight? Long story short, so if you guys don't follow basketball, um, this, is a, this is an off-topic thing, but in regards to the Knicks game tonight, I'm going to go... I would really like to see the Knicks slide to the four seed. So they're going to have to lose two of their next three games, you know. But if they – I don't want us to play the Knicks. I'd rather have us not play the Knicks. So I would also be okay if we had to play them in the second round um, and uh, have them as the two seed. But in order for that to happen – the Knicks have to win out the rest of the way, and the Bucks have to lose out. All right, what's up, Jacqueline? What's going on? How you doing? Thanks so much for coming on here, as always. Phillies go to the bottom of the first. All right, so their starting lineup. It's Kyle Schwarber, the designated hitter for tonight. Turner's over at short. Harper's at first. Real Muto's catching behind the plate. Bohm's at third, batting fifth. Marsh hitting in the sixth spot over in center field. Castellanos is out in right field. He's batting seventh, and then batting eighth. He slid down in the lineup, and that's Bryson Stott. So he is batting eighth. He's over at second base. And Whit Merrifield, the left fielder, he is batting ninth. He made a pretty good catch out in left field to end the first inning. So here's Kyle Schwarber up at the plate facing Jerry Jones. We'll talk about his stats in just a few moments. High late kick and the pitch. Line drive into right field for a base hit. And Kyle Schwarber gets aboard on the first pitch and... Is able to smash a single out to right field. Only got a fastball that was right over towards the plate and just was able to get the barrel on it and put it in a good spot. It's funny, sometimes I think about the shift and if it still was even a thing, that would have been 
hit right into the shift. Here's Trey Turner. As he comes up and he lines this one out to center field, and that's going to drop in for a base hit just in front of the center fielder. Schwarber stops at second, and on back-to-back pitches in the bottom of the first, the Phillies get two singles, one from Schwarber and one from Turner. That time, uh, that time it was a more of an outside pitch for towards the outside part of the plate, but Jones... Not able to put the fastball in a good spot. He's 1-1 one one on the season with a 3.86 earned run average, 17 strikeouts, and 11.2 innings of work. Only two walks allowed. Let's see if Bryce Harper can join in on the party. Harper wearing the white batting gloves today. Phillies in their powder blue uniforms. First pitch to Harper, taken down low for ball one. A 99-mile-per-hour fastball. The belt tonight is blue, powder blue. Schwarber's at second, Turner's at first. Both of them got on with singles. And the 1-0 pitch, grounder hit over to shortstop and the flip over, or the play over the second. There's one in the throw over to first in time. That is a 6-3 double play for Bryce Harper. And he went 0 for 10 against the St. Louis Cardinals. And he has been really struggling at the plate. I was a little bit surprised that uh, Cruz just... Uh, didn't even flip it over to Triolo, who was covering the bag. He just took it himself and just threw a threw a weird ball over to first place or the first base for the second out of the double play. So JT is up to bat. Schwarber's over at third. Turner was out at second, and Harper, of course, grounded into the six three double play. Here's JT who will ground this one foul over towards the third base side. Linda, what's going on, Linda? What's up, Den Brew? Now we're getting people on here. Tada, what's going on? Huh. All right, so two outs and a runner over at third. There's Bryce Harper. He knows that he is in a slump. He can certainly bounce out of it, though, the 0-1 pitch, and they don't even have to appeal. JT went around. Six pitches so far. Two hits allowed by Jared Jones in this inning. No balls, two strikes. Jones gets set at the belts, kicks, delivers the pitch upstairs and outside as well. Uh, The Pirates' defense on the diamond looks like this. Jones is on the mound. Davis is over uh, behind the plate. Joe's at first. Triolo's at second. Hayes is at third. O'Neal Cruz is over at shortstop. And then the outfield, it's Reynolds, Taylor, and Olivares from left to right. And the one-two is just fouled off. Huh. All right, JJ, do you want Micah Parsons on your Eagles? Uh, I don't know, man. I haven't really thought about it. Lots of clouds in the sky. Still out in center field. Lots of dark clouds, but no rain just yet. The one-two on the way to JT. Line drive caught over at second base, and that's going to end the inning. Triolo played him perfectly. And the inning comes to an end. So on back-to-back singles, on back-to-back pitches, the Phillies not able to do anything about that. Harper grounded into a 6-3 double play, and JT lined out the second. And that's how the inning concludes. We go to the top of the second. No score at the bank. Hey, Cameron. What's up? What's up, Cam? How you doing, man? Thanks so much for coming on and for supporting the channel. Appreciate it. Yo, I haven't seen you in a long time, says Mitch. I just saw you for lunch today, you. Uh, that was good, though. Had a good time with you. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Hit the bell icons, and that way you'll know when I go live for a Phillies, a Sixers, or an Eagles game. We got 5, 6, and 7 coming up for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Andrew McCutcheon will be leading things off. In this top of the second inning versus Ranger Suarez. Uh, yeah. All right. Cheers. <clears throat> Final score predictions. Final score predictions. Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with my final score prediction today is three to one Pirates. Three to one Pirates. I think that the Phillies are going to get a lot of hits, but they're going to leave a lot of runners in scoring position. 
and it's just going to not be a high offensive day. But yeah, what are your final score predictions? I'm going to go with 3 to 1 as my final score prediction. 3 to 1 Pittsburgh, okay? That is what I'm going to go with. We go to the top of the second. Let us know what your final score predictions are down below. Uh, all right, so we go to the top of the second inning. The Phillies, mind you, they're 6-6 six and six on the season. They're 2-4 and four at home. I saw an interesting stat, and this is courtesy of NBC Sports Philadelphia, but the Phillies, okay, they are 6-6 six and six, uh, throughout their first 12 games. They're 3-3 three and three in day games, 3-3 three and three in night games, and they're 1-1. One and one on every single day of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. They're one and one. So here's McCutcheon who stares at a sinker that's down just below the zone for a ball. Suarez back out there on the bump. He threw 20 pitches in the first inning. Phillies in their powder blue uniforms. The kick and the pitch from Ranger is in there for a strike at the knees. Andrew McCutcheon, who's now fourth on the all-time Pirates list in homers. So he's right behind Roberto Clemente, who is 240. And the next pitch is fouled back. McCutcheon has 215. He needs one more to get his 300th career homer. Right now he's at 299. The 1-2 on the way. Wide. Cutter at 86. And it's an even count at two apiece. Ranger only allowed a walk in the first. It was a two-out walk to Cabrian Hayes. Two balls, two strikes. Ranger kicks, delivers, throws a cutter that's inside. That'll make the count full. You say six to four Phillies, says Katie. Okay, five to six, a uh, six to five Philly. Four to two Phillies. Okay, four to one. And you got nine to six, Mitch. 3-2 on the way. Strike three called at the knees. Nice pitch thrown by Ranger. He gets a backwards K. And Andrew McCutcheon will head back to the dugout. Not so happy about that call, but it was certainly the right one. Just in the zone at the knees at 93 miles per hour. And now the next batter is Michael A. Taylor. Who takes a ball just outside. So one ball, no strikes. Ranger gets set at the letters, kicks, delivers, and it's swung on and missed right down the middle at 93 miles per hour. Huh. Michael A. Taylor, I want to make sure that I mentioned that he uh, started off the season really strong. He was on a seven-game hitting streak. The 1-1 one, one delivery fouled back. And during that time, he had three multi-hit games. Two of those were three-hit games versus the Nationals. And he was 12 for 25 during that streak with six runs scored, three doubles, six RBI, and a stolen base. Calls for time really quickly as he'll take a step out of the box. But against Detroit, he was 0 for 7 in that series. One ball, two strikes. Ranger kicks, delivers, and goes inside. To make the count even at two apiece. What's up, Larry? Six to three Pirates would be nice. Taylor, who's been playing in, this is now his 11th season, has 95 career homers. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Swing and a miss. Well, Ranger decided to go upstairs. And he gets back-to-back -back strikeouts to start off the top of the second inning. Not too much of velocity on the fastball, just at 94, but a good job by Ranger to elevate his pitch. And Taylor just could not get a piece of it. Two gone, and O'Neill Cruz, the switch hitter batting on the left side, takes a sinker right down Broadway for a strike. So Ranger has retired five out of the six batters that he has faced. And the 0-1 is just inside for a ball. Huh. So one ball, one strike. Cruz went 0 for 5 against the Detroit Tigers with a walk and two strikeouts. The 1-1, ground ball, diving stop over by Harper. Flip over to Ranger, who covers the bag. It's in time. Nice play by Harper. 
had to dive over towards his left side, played it right towards the line, and made the underhanded toss to Suarez, who won the race over at first. So, a 1-2-3 inning by Ranger Suarez as the side is retired. And we go to the bottom of the second. Phillies and Pirates scoreless so far. Nice play by Harper. Cool. Doing good. Big crew. Oh, bro, Cruz is not a switch hitter. Oh, oh man, that was my bad. I forgot... I I forgot they sit so <laughs> I forgot about that. I forgot that he bats left and he throws with his right. So that is correct. My bad. Usually when I see sometimes when I see that on the ESPN app, I usually think that that means that they're a switch hitter, but that is not always the case and you were right to correct me about that. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. He bats left and throws right. That's correct. So, what's going on, bro? How you doing? <sighs> if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon, and that way you'll know when I go live. Um, the name is Jason Joseph. This is Play by Play with JJ. You guys are the best. I appreciate you guys so much for being here. Hopefully, this rain can just hold out. And the, the weather just does not look good, the forecast, that is. Um, and... A lot of dark clouds coming in still at Citizens Bank Park. Dig deep shit. Uh, dig deep. Dig deep sheep says I throw left and bat right. I was confused for a second. Switch hitter from. Switch hitter hitting from the left side against a lefty pitcher. Yeah. That's right. We got a powder blue bell tonight. Now towards the outfield. Ranger did a really good job at just getting the last three batters out in that second inning. He struck out McCutcheon and was able to strike out Taylor as well. And Cruz grounded out over to first. Here's Al Bohm to, uh, as he steps into the box and he looks at a pitch that's just above the zone. So Jared Jones on the bump behind in the count 1-0. and oh. Jones with nine pitches in that first inning. He allowed two singles on the first two pitches. As the 1 0 is up high and inside for ball two. Then he got Harper to ground into a 6 3 double play, and Real Muto lined out over to second base. Two balls, no strikes. Eight seconds left on the pitch clock. Jones gets set just at the belt, and the 2 0 pitch line drive into right field. It's going to drop in for a hit, and Alec Bohm gets an opposite field single to start off the second inning. Oliveris had to play it on a hop. And Bohm just uh, able to drill that thing out to right field. So that's now 19 straight singles that have been hit by uh, the Phillies in regards to their... So, oh, so their last 19 hits have all been singles, which is just absolutely insane. Smarsh up at the plate. Jones throws a curveball, and it looked a little bit high, but... It's a high strike in the eyes of Hunter Wendelstadt. Marsh batting 333 with three long balls and seven RBI on the season. The ball is one strike. Jones delivers from the stretch, and the 0-1 is up high again. The time it was a little bit more higher. One with a fastball, though, at 97 miles per hour. Marsh batting 333. He's 26 years old. Stands at 6-4, and the 1-1 is swung on and missed. He is on a three-game hitting streak. He got a hit in all three games against the Cardinals. But he's also struck out in each of his last four games, too. Jones gets set again at the belt. Gets the signs from Davis, and the 1-2 on the way, swing and a miss, and Marsh strikes out on the slider that was heading towards the dirt. First strikeout recorded tonight by Jared Jones. And there's the first out of the inning. Castellano steps into the box. Hitting 163 on the season. The first pitch he sees is a slider that's at the knees for a called strike. 
running at 83 miles per hour. Ball leads off over at first. Jones getting ready to throw his 18th pitch of the game. Three seconds left on the pitch clock in the windup and the pitch. Line drive out to right field. It's going back towards the track, and it is caught in foul ground by Olivares as he just collided into the wall. He did slow his tracks down, but that ball was blowing over towards the right side in foul territory, and Olivares had a very good read on it. Not easy at all whatsoever, and that's certainly going to be one of the Really good defensive plays so far of the game. Probably one of the best ones. And actually, if it dropped, I think it could have actually hit the line. It was headed towards foul ground, though. Now Bryson Stott comes up. Stott wearing his white batting gloves, powder blue uniforms, and throw back to first to try to keep Bowman in check is not in time. He'll dive back in there safely. And uh, when uh, Oliveris caught it, just caught, just got the heel of the glove. Stat takes the next pit, or takes the first pitch, and it's a slider. Looks a little bit low, but it's a called strike at the knees. Stat last year against the Pirates was six for seventeen, and at a three fifty three average. The O one pitch. There's a fly ball hit out towards left field. It'll stay in the yard though. And calling everyone off is the center fielder, Taylor, and he'll make the catch. He had to communicate with Reynolds. It was hit out towards the alleyway. The inning comes to an end. So the second inning in a row where the Phillies had a leadoff single and couldn't get anybody home. So we go to the top of the third inning. Phillies and Pirates scoreless so far. Uh, what am I doing? <sighs> My aunt's here. What's up, Aunt Janice? Thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Means a lot. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe and hit the notification bell icon, and that way you'll know when I go live. The name is Jason Joseph. This is Play by Play with JJ. I hope that you're all having yourselves a very, very nice day. I really do. Um, if you are just tuning in for the first time, um, just let me know in the chat down below what uh, what got you into baseball, and when was that first? What was that first moment like when you got into baseball? If you were tuning in for the very first time, uh, mine is I got into baseball, so I am twenty five years old. Uh, yeah. It's hard to believe I'm 25 years old. And uh, I got into it when I was about eight. I was eight years old. I watched I watched uh, the game on TV. I pulled it on. I was trying to find Nickelodeon. I was in my bedroom. Long story short, Nickelodeon was channel 33. And then Comcast Sportsnet was channel 34. And I just happened to see this guy up at the plate. Um, didn't know who it was. It's a towering fly ball out to left center field and it's a uh, home run and the crowd's erupting here we go ranger suarez on the bump to start off the top of the third and he throws the first pitch down low for a ball he'll face triolo davis and joe that's eight nine and one in the lineup the 1-0 on the way misses inside for ball two so mom calls me down for dinner and she says, Jason, it's time for dinner. I said, okay, mom. And usually that means like I'll be down in like a minute, uh, maybe a couple of minutes. To, uh, on the way, there's a dribbler over towards uh, JT, takes off the mask and throws over to first, and there's one out. So Triolo is retired, and Henry Davis is coming up with one out in the top of the third. No score so far in this game. So anyhow... I go downstairs, my dad's in the living room, and uh, this guy that just hit this home run is up at the plate again, and he hits a second homer. 
And what do you know, it was Ryan Howard. First pitch by Ranger is in there for a strike. It was a curveball. He's not wasting any time here. The 0-1 on the way. Misses inside for a ball. So the count is even at 1-1. One and one. And uh, that's really how I got into it. Ryan Howard was just the guy that really stood out to me, and he was my favorite athlete growing up. The 1-1 one one on the way. Ground ball right through the hole into center field, back up the middle. And there's a base hit. It's a single out towards left center. And there's one out. So that's the first hit allowed today by Ranger Suarez on the mound. What's up, Jason? I started playing T-ball when I was six as Twisted Media. Cool. That's, that's really, really cool. Anybody else? I'm 26. It's hard to believe, too. <laughs> Connor Joe will step into the box, hitting on the right side, and he looks at a pitch that's on the upper third of the zone for a called strike. Joe went two for three in the last series against the Detroit Tigers. The 0-1 on the way, lined foul towards the third base side. He had an RBI infield single and an RBI double to go along with that in game one. And that was on Monday night against Detroit. They ended up uh, losing that game. Well, they ended up splitting the series to the to the Detroit Tigers. The 0-2 on the way just misses. It was a curveball that was low at 75 miles per hour. Huh. One ball, two strikes, one out in the top of the third. A runner is over at first base. Derek Shelton with his lineup card in the dugout. Ranger looks back at first, now back to the plate. And the 1-2, There's a, it's slapped over towards the first base side. Harper looked at second, didn't have a play, and just jogged on over to first to get uh, Connor Joe out. But the runner from first does go over to second, so that'll put Davis in scoring position. And Brian Reynolds will be the next one to bat. So the Pirates, they won the first game of the series, and then yesterday, or sorry, two days ago, was the day where David Bedner uh, gave up four runs in the ninth inning. The Pirates had a 3-1 to one lead, and, and uh, Bedner ended up blowing the save, and the Tigers came back to win 5-3. to three. First pitch underway, and that's taken for a ball. So Brian Hayes waits in the on-deck circle. Reynolds lined out to right. Davis over at second. Ranger looks back at him in the 1-0 pitch in there for a strike on the inside corner at 91 miles per hour. Reynolds lined out in his first at-bat. He's batting on the right side. Switch hitter has uh, had a pretty productive career so far. The 1-1 on the way from Ranger. It's at the knees for a strike on the inside corner. The count is 1-2 and two now. Oh, oh, we're talking about dinner. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Ranger gets set and delivers strike three. Well, swung at a curveball, Reynolds. He went fishing after it and just couldn't catch up to it. And we go to the bottom of the third inning. No runs, one hit, one man left. Philly's coming back up to bat in this scoreless game so far as they start off the series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Four game set. JJ, I grew up right near Henry Davis. Really? Huh. That's cool. That's really, really cool, man. So Henry is uh Henry is uh Henry's in New York. Yep, Bedford, New York, huh? Okay. That's really cool. Of course, of course. How could I not hear about it? It was all over the news today. Yep, heard all about it. Um, yeah, all right, so bottom of the third we go. 9-1-2 and two coming up for the Fightins. They're looking to try to hunt for some runs. Huh. 
time is it? 7.15? All right, cool. Sorry, I had to answer my text. I had to answer my text really quickly. Huh. Hmm. We had a couple of games that were already postponed today. One of them was the Milwaukee Cincinnati game, and the other one was the Twins Tigers game. Other than that, we have three final scores in two games that are underway right now. That's it. Here's Whit Merrifield. As Jones is back out there on the bump for his third inning of work and throws it inside and high for ball one. He'll get set above the letters, kick and deliver, and it's fouled back towards the screen. Merrifield only had one at bat. In the last series, and he struck out. It was against the Cardinals. Jones kicks and deals and throws a slider that swung on and missed to make the count now one and two. Merrifield just batting a buck sixty-seven on the season. It was a big acquisition for the Phillies in the offseason. Oh, one two on the way. Low. Another slider that's in the dirt. Clouds are still getting dark, but sometimes it's really tough to tell at this hour if it's just the nighttime skies or if it's just uh or if it's rain rain clouds or if it's both. <laughs> the two two low for ball three. Three balls, two strikes. The payoff pitch to Merrifield. Swing on a fly ball hit out to left field. It's going back towards the track, towards the wall. And it's a foul ball. Just hooked over towards the left side. And Merrifield has to go back to the plate. Yep. Was heading towards the pole. And Jones just literally got away with one. <laughs> Merrifield didn't think it was going to go. And he actually started to speed up as he was running over to first base. He started jogging. And then he started running. So he's back at the plate, calls for time, and the pitch clock will reset. Cruz just grounded out to, th to first base. That's it, in case you're wondering. Three balls, two strikes, and the payoff pitch. There's a high bouncer over to second base, and the flip over to first is just in time. Give Merrifield credit for at least trying to hustle down the first base line. But he is out, and we go back to the top of the order. Kyle Schwarber will be coming up. Huh. So Schwarber singled in the first, just on the first pitch that was thrown by Jared Jones. And then Trey Turner would then follow up with the next at-bat with a single on the first pitch. First pitch in this at-bat is low to Kyle Schwarber. But then Harper grounded into a 6-3 double play, and JT lined out the second to end that rally killer. The 1 0, chopped foul. And the count is 1 and 1. Harleysville is right next to me. I don't know what Harleysville is. Oh, you live in Lansdale now. Huh. It's cool. The 1 to 1 on the way. Change up. It's low at 92 miles per hour. It is a home game. Yep. Philly's playing at CBP. If you're looking at the screen, it's on the right side. Usually the, the team on the right is the home, and the team on the left is the away team. Two balls, one strike. Jones gets set, kicks, fires, and throws a pitch that's wide for ball three. Harleysville across the street from the Little League field is, uh, has been playing for as long as I can remember. Grew up in the 50s. Wow. 3-1 on the way. Slider that's taken at the knees all the way for a strike. And the count is now full to Schwarber. Kyle just went 1-for-12 against the Cardinals. 
Had a run scored, three walks, and struck out four times in that series. Three balls, two strikes, and the payoff pitch to Schwarber, swing and a miss. And Kyle goes back to the dugout. Second K of the night for Jones. And Trey Turner is due up next. I think that Schwarber was thinking fastball there and just obviously didn't get a good judgment on it. The pitch was inside, and Schwarber was not able to get anything there. So here's, here's Trey Turner who steps into the box and takes a strike right down Broadway at 98 miles per hour. Trey hitting 292 on the season with three RBI. Look at starting to drizzle at the bank. Two outs, space is empty. No balls, one strike. Jones kicks, delivers, and it's outside and low for a ball. Appreciate that, man. You live in Sparks, Nevada now, and I'm glad you're on uh, because everything here is San Francisco and L.A. <laughs> the 1-1 delivery slider thrown right down the pipe again, and Turner takes, doesn't even offer anything at it, and the count is 1-2. and two. Jones not wasting any time, kicks, fires, and it's swung on and missed for strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Jared Jones. And Turner chases after a pitch that was not even close. And another 1-2-3 inning for Jared Jones. And we go to the top of the fourth, still scoreless at CBP. Uh, live in Sparks. Yeah. I appreciate you for being here, man. I really do. Schwarber doing well. How are his stats? Uh, I'll tell you right now. Kyle in 208 on the season with two homers and five RBI. There you go. Huh. All right. We'll take another sip of water. How's Turner doing this year? Uh, Trey is batting 277. Still looking for his first homer and just his three RBI. Huh. So, yeah, so coming up to bat in this fourth inning for the Pirates, it'll be Hayes, Olivares, and McCutcheon. That's the heart of the lineup. Four hits combined between the Phillies and the Pirates. All of them have resulted in singles. The only guy that got a hit today for the Pirates is Henry Davis. That was back in the previous inning. And Hayes, who walked his first time up, is going to lead things off. Yep. Streaky. That's the game of baseball. When you're hot, you're hot. And when you're cold, you're cold. Look at Bryce Harper right now. Bryce, is, Bryce went 0 for 10 in the last series, and yet, not too long ago, he had three homers in a game. Just really, really wild stuff. So here's Cabrian Hayes. Ranger goes out there for his fourth inning of work and throws a strike on the outside corner. Hayes will step out of the box for a quick second. He's hitting 313 on the season with a 375 slugging percentage and six RBI. I think Ranger's having a pitch comp problem. He... Had to reset his cap, and he'll just shake it off and put the glove back on. So that's back on. The 0-1 coming up, and Ranger throws a curveball just on the outside corner at the knees. Could not have thrown that any better. Taken all the way for strike two. 0-2 is the count. Ranger gets the signs from JT, kicks and delivers, and throws it down low for a ball. Um, oh, I just said it, man. I just said it not too long ago. Uh, O'Neal Cruz grounded out to first. Grounded out to first. One ball, two strikes, and the one-two on the way. Swing and a miss on the changeup at 80 miles per hour. It was outside, and Cabrian Hayes strikes out. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts. Dating back to the end of the third inning. The top of the third, that is. 
Right now we're in the fourth, and there's one gone. So Hayes goes back to the dugout, and Edward Olivares is coming up. Ranger throws the first pitch up high in this at-bat for a ball. Edward lined out in the first. He's in 310 on the season, three homers, seven RBI, a 655 slugging percentage. And the 1-0 is just on the inside corner for strike one. Huh. So uh, Olivares, as uh, the 28-year-old has had a good season as the 1-1 is up high for ball two. He had two solo homers his last time out against the Detroit Tigers. And of course, the Pirates will lose that game 5-3. to three. The 2-1 on the way. Line drive in the left field. It drops in front of Merrifield for a base hit. And Oliveris rounds first, but he'll put the brakes on, and he'll go back towards the bag. And he gets on with a one-out single out to left field. He's been really swinging the ball very, very well as of lately. The right fielder who played for the Kansas City Royals um, and uh, played with them for four seasons. He's now in a Pirates uniform. Started off his career, though, with the Padres in 2020. Here's Andrew McCutcheon. Who's looking for home run number 300 of his career, and he stares at a fastball that's inside for ball one. Did strike out in the second, hitting 200 this season. Two RBI for him as well to go along with that. And the 1-0 on the way, that's fouled back towards the screen. Andrew, uh, this season, has uh, just uh, five hits and 24 at-bats. Lifetime-wise, though, he has 2,053 hits and a career batting average of 276. The 1-1 one -on, on the way from Ranger inside again for ball two. 59 pitches for Suarez. We're in the top of the fourth. There's a runner at first, one out, two balls, one strike to Andrew McCutcheon in his yellow batting gloves. The 2-1 on the way fouled back towards the screen. Huh. Yeah, Zach, I'll, uh, I'll answer that during the break. I'll do that. McCutcheon stepped out of the box for a very quick second. Oliveris leads off over at first base. Ranger looks back, and the 2-2 is bounced foul. Edward uh, had 11 stolen bases last season, got caught stealing five times, and he only stored four bags successfully over his uh, first uh, three years. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch on the way fouled off the foot, the front foot of McCutcheon. The count still is even at two apiece. Ranger has one, his top button unbuttoned. It's usually what he does. Castellanos, he, he likes to leave the jersey uh, he likes to leave two, the top two buttons undone. But I think that that's just a comfort thing for the both of them. Kutchin stepped out of the box for a quick second. Two balls, two strikes. Now he's back in. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Another foul ball. I think that that's now the fourth straight foul ball that McCutcheon has had in this at-bat. And he's making Ranger work here. Two balls, two strikes, one out, top of the fourth inning. No score so far. A runner at first. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Another foul ball right back towards the net behind home plate. McCutcheon's now 37 years old. Remember when he came up in 2009? My dad said to me that this guy's going to be really, really good. And he was right. 2-2 two -two on the way. That's taken down low for ball three. Guy that has had a pretty incredible career so far. Pretty good solid career. He's now DHing for the Pirates over the last couple of years. Spent time with the, the Giants, the Yankees, the Phillies, and the Brewers. 3-2 on the way is just chopped foul. So it still is a full count to Andrew McCutcheon. 
to the 37-year-old, a five-time All-Star from 2011 to 2015. Of course, he won the NL MVP in 2013. That was him and Buster Posey that were up for that and also had a gold glove in 2012. Three balls, two strikes, the 3-2 on the way. Strike three called. It was just a little bit inside, but Hunter Wendelstadt called to the strike. And Andrew McCutcheon goes down looking for the second time today. Two outs in the top of the fourth. Man, oh man, that was, it wasn't like it was an egregious call. Because, of course, that when you're looking at the monitor, you see a digital strike zone. And the umpires don't have that, but that was, that was inside, according to the zone that they were showing on StatCast. Michael A. Taylor struck out in the second. Looks at, is behind in the count, 0-1 here. Oliveris is over at second now, so he just stole a base. The 0-1 on the way, swing and a miss. Suarez wanted to go up the elevator and inside, and he won that pitch right there. 69 pitches for Ranger. No balls, two strikes. First runner in scoring position for the Pirates today. Taylor's at the plate. He struck out his first at-bat in the second. The 0-2 from Ranger just chopped foul over towards the third base side. Huh. What's up, Shane? What's up, my guy? He said, this is amazing, man. I can't get the cable right now, so I came here. Love hearing baseball in radio form. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. That's what we do. We do that for the Phillies. We do it for the Sixers and the Eagles. Ranger looks back at second. Now back to the plate. Throws a high pitch, and it's just upstairs for ball one. It was at 92 miles per hour. Taylor is two for six this season with runners in scoring position. Has driven in six runs and has also scored a run during that time as well. The pitch. Swing and a miss. So two straight strikeouts from Ranger Suarez. The side is retired. He struck out all three. Uh, he struck out three of the four batters that he did face in this inning. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. No score at the bank. Phillies come back up and are looking to try to get on the scoreboard. Huh. Oh, what's going on, Mr. Rudy Poo? What's going on, my guy? What is up? How you doing? And this team is so old and slow. This is looking like the 2019 Eagles. <laughs> Bro, I see your comments on DJ Eastwood's chat and stuff. I, you, know, you know, I see your comments on RB's channel too. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out to you. I was thinking one day you were going to find this channel. So, that's great. I'm happy that you found it. I, I, you know, I see, I see you on these YouTube streets, man. So, thank you so much for coming on here and for... Uh, and for stopping by, appreciate it. Seriously, me too, brother. Y yeah, when it comes to the play-by-play, -play, thank you, guys. I do appreciate it. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. The name, of course, is Jason Joseph. This is Play-by-play -play with JJ. We are live for every single Phillies, Sixers, and Eagles game. We do radio-style play-by-play. For those of you that don't get cable, for those of you that are not able to watch the game, or for, for those of you that, of course, have a bet, that's uh, going on. If you guys want to tune in on here, you're more than welcome to do so. We just also have a really, really nice community. Some people actually like to listen to the game and listen to, or, or sorry, they like to watch the game and listen to the radio cast at the same time. It's definitely an interesting medium that we have on here, and we've been going at it for 15 months, and it's been a lot of fun. It's It's been very life-changing, but it's been a lot of fun too. Huh. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Both teams combined at five hits and no runs scored. Every single hit has been a single, and Bryce Harper, who grounded into a 6-3 double play his first time up, is due up to start off the bottom of the fourth. Jones gets set and delivers and throws a strike right down the hatch, and Harper swung right through it. It was at 97 on the gun. Harper's looking to snap out of a funk that he's been in. No balls, one strike, and the 0-1 way up high. JJ, you're one of my favorite streamers. Thank you, appreciate it, man. What's up, Snow? And we got a nice audience here now. Cool, cool stuff. Cloud's still settling in, 
but no sign of rain so far. The 1-1 one, one to Harper. There's a little tapper over towards the first base side, and Joe gobbles it up, and he just taps the bag for out number one. Harper was hoping that it would stay foul, but it did not. It was just fair, and he grounds out to Connor Joe over at first base. There's one away. So here comes JT Realmuto. He will step into the box for the Vitans. For sure, man, I mess with the Philly sports content creators. <laughs> You're the best, bro. You really are. These two men share something in common. All right. Derek is in the business of fulfilling so, dreams. No balls, one strike to JT Sam Real thought his Muto. dreams were taken away because of Derek. Sorry about that. I don't know what that was. The 0 1 on the way, swing and a miss. It was a slider that was at 88 miles per hour. I don't know what that was. I just turned down the volume, so. We don't have to play any audio or media on here, so that's that's good stuff. Can't remember the last time we hit a homer. <laughs> it's been a little bit of time. I remember JT's homer, but it's been a little bit of time. No balls, two strikes. One out in the bottom of the fourth base is empty. The 0-2 on the way, outside and wide. The time Jones decided to go with a slider at 89 miles per hour. So Jared Jones, who's on the bump, has done a pretty good job today. He's only allowed four hits and three and a third of an inning. He's 22 years old. The one-two swing and a miss. JT swung at a very high fastball. It was maybe about half a foot above the zone. And he'll go back to the dugout as he goes chasing again. The chase rate for the Phillies in regards to this game is... Not really been a good thing for them. It's not something that you want to count on a lot. 44 pitches and three hits allowed, I should say. I said four, but I meant to say three. And here's Alec Bohm, who step in on the right side of the box. It's in there for a strike. Or outside for a ball. The 1 0 on the way to Bohm. That looked a little bit outside, but it's in there for a strike, and Bohm does not agree with that call by Wendell Stat. Alex Singleton, the first. He's one for one today. His average has slipped down now to 256 with seven RBI. Still looking for his first homer of the season. The pitch chopped foul behind the plate, and it's now a 1 2 count. So Jones is 22. He's from Whittier, uh, California. The pitch, again, will throw it fat, and uh, Bohm fouls that one off. He was drafted by the Pirates in the second round of the 2020 MLB draft, but then he signed with the Pirates, but then uh, he played at the University of Texas at Austin. And... Uh, or, or, yeah, he signed with the Pirates. He had an offer from the University of Texas at Austin and uh, made his debut in 2021 with the Pirates. Organization, that is. One ball, two strikes. The pitch to Boehm. Fly ball, hit out to center field. It's carrying. It's going back towards the track, towards the wall, and it is gone! Alec Boom with a home run out towards the Phillies bullpen. Just had enough oomph, and the Phillies take a one nothing lead in the bottom of the fourth inning. And that is how they get on the board. Boom. This was able to take a hanging curveball over t towards the outside corner. And I got to tell you that that was a pretty good effort out in center field that was made by uh, Michael A. Taylor. Thought maybe he had a chance of catching that and committing some highway robbery. But Bohm gets a homer, and that's his first of the season. So there you go, Mr. Rudy Poo. <laughs> There you go. Did I say Rudy Poo? Wait, 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 hold up. Do you say Roddy Poo or, or a Rudy Poo? 
No balls, one strike to Brandon Marsh. The pitch is just above the zone for a ball. So the count is even at one apiece. The pitch to Marsh is inside for ball two. And, you know, talk about Alec Bowman, just about his whole career here as, as a Philly. You know, this, if you guys remember two years ago, this is when, this was the exact day that he said, um, that he said, I hate this place. But he said it with a little bit more, uh, with more curse words and uh, that type of stuff. But he's really come such a long way here. The 2 1 on the way is in there for a strike. He's made a lot of improvements defensively and even offensively, and he absolutely loves it here. The 2 2 pitch is low and inside for ball three. Yes, sir. Nice. Reverse jinx worked. It did. It did. That's what I was trying to say. 3 2 to Marsh, strike three called. A little bit of some freeze dance, and Marsh goes down looking. And we go to the top of the fifth. But nonetheless, finally, after 19 straight uh, hits that were all singles, Alec Bohm broke the streak and was able to hit a, somer, a, a, a homer out the center. And they take a 1 0 lead as we go to the top of the fifth. We'll be right back in just a few moments. What's going on, everybody? Hopefully you're all doing well. What's up, Vince, man? How you doing, bro? Thanks so much for coming on here. Appreciate it, bro. I really do. We have, uh, I don't know how many people we have on here, but I'm sure that we have a lot. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you are coming on in. My name is Jason Joseph, and this, of course, is Play by Play with JJ. We are live for every single... We try to come on for as many Phillies, Sixers, and Eagles games as we possibly can. This is like our busiest time of the year because we got Sixers basketball and we got Phillies baseball going on at the same exact time, but we're trying to sneak in games every now and then with our schedule that we have. Um, I wanted to, I am going to start a poll, um, and I probably will do it maybe during the next break or sometime, sometime during the game, where uh, I wanted to ask you guys if you, I was thinking about getting the game covered tomorrow, okay? Um, the Phillies game that is, would you be okay with that? Even though I'm not going to be calling it, I would have somebody else come on here and call the game for me, and I would do it. Um, I would be calling, of course, the Sixers game tomorrow night. I'll probably start a poll on that. Here's O'Neill Cruz at the plate, batting on the left side, and I'll chop the next pitch foul. So the first pitch was it was a 1-0 count, and now it's chopped foul over towards the first base side. Ron! Ron, I haven't seen you on here in a while. Jess, is that you, Jess? I think you go by Jess. The 1-1 one -one ground ball foul over towards the first base side. It was a 91-mile-per-hour pitch thrown by Ranger, who was 75 pitches today. Last time uh, Ranger faced the Pirates, uh, he definitely did not have a good outing. It was on September 27th of last year. The one-two on the way, swing and a miss. And Ranger gets his seventh strikeout of the day. But so far in this game, he's done a very good job. O'Neill Cruz goes down swinging to start off the top of the fifth. And there's one gone. In that game, though, he allowed six runs on nine hits and just four and two-thirds of an inning. 
There we go. So Triolo's going to ground this one over towards the first base side. It was a hot shot over towards Harper, and Harper makes the easy play over at first, and there's two gone. But the last time that Ranger got a win versus the Pirates, it was back in 2021, and he pitched a complete game shutout and only surrendered four hits in that game. The nine-hole hitter, that's Henry Davis, not wearing any batting gloves. He's up at the plate, batting on the right side. And Suarez gets ready, and he throws a curveball that's inside, just below the knees for a ball. Suarez is delivering very quickly again. The 1-0 pitch. There's a slow roll over to third base. Barehanded by ball. Flip over to first. He got him! Nice play by Bohm over at the hot corner. He's made a couple of those really nice plays this season where he gets a slow roller, he barehands it, throws his sidearm over to first base, and, well, you thought that he could just hit a home run and do a lot on the offensive side? Well, he's, d he's done a lot on the defensive side, too, and especially on that play. That was great. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Phillies lead it one to nothing. Oh, I wish that closeout was better. That's fine. Uh, how are you, man? Yep. Intermission brought to you by Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> brought to you by Bud Light. I love that. <laughs> Bud Light, Coors Light. Uh, I don't know how you say it. How do they say that? Genese? Cream Ale, White Rain Microwave Tacos from yesterday, <laughs> etc. Nicolette says pirates are looking horrible. Yeah, not in this game. They are yeah, in this game they are not looking their best at all. Huh. I just think that that's such a funny thing though, like literally on the two year anniversary where Bohm muttered under his breath and everybody saw it and he said he said the words, I bleep and hate this place. He has a home run and he makes a really good defensive play over at third base. He has really come so far. And it has been a pretty big uh, key cog for the Phillies. You know, he's now 27. He's about ready to enter into his prime. He's been a very big upgrade for sure. Huh. Anybody else? Uh, I don't know what I was going to ask. Can't remember. Nick Castellanos will come on up, lead things off. It's 7, 8, and 9 due up in the order for the Phillies. Jones still out there for his fifth inning of work. He winds up, kicks, steals the pitch, fly ball, hit out towards center field, not that deep. And coming out to make the catch out in center is Taylor. Didn't even have to move a whole lot. And there's one away. Now Bryson Stott's coming up. So Stott. Um, he hit really well against the Pirates last year. I said that before, but he has uh, slipped down in the order. He's batting in the eighth spot today, and hopefully he can try to get things going really soon because we know that he's a very good hitter, and he's a great competitor out there too. First pitch is in there for a strike. Fight out in the second. The three RBIs on the season. The 0-1 by Jones. It's a curveball at the knees for a strike on the outside corner. Stott's now 26. The ball's two strikes. The 0-2 on the way, swing and a miss. And Stott goes chasing after a changeup at 91 miles per hour. There's the sixth strikeout for Jones on the day. Man, just a changeup in the dirt. Stott got fooled. Two up, two down, and stat struggles continue. Whit Merrifield is due up next. Steps up towards the dish, and he takes a strike at 96 miles per hour. Just on the inside corner for a strike. That's just gone four for 29 this month and is batting 138 in the month of April. The pitch, 
Another pop-up. This time it's out towards left field. Reynolds doesn't even have to move, and they'll make the catch. Another 1-2-3 inning. That's the third time today that uh, Jared Jones has been able to get a 1-2-3 inning, and we go to the top of the sixth. Phillies up 1-0. Quick game so far. This is ridiculous. Yeah, this is, like, pretty quick. I'm doing good, Jess. I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty wild. All right, so we got the Knicks and the Celtics on two. That game has been going by pretty quickly as well. The Mets, how about the Mets today? They put up 16 runs and were able to destroy the Braves at Truist Park. And then uh, Kansas City had 13 runs today. Bobby Witt Jr. was the big story of that game. Uh, two homers for him and also five RBI, four runs scored, and uh, just uh, has had a very good start to the season so far. Bobby Witt, now 23 years old, hitting three fifty-eight, and uh, has four homers and eight RBI. When he was when I was interning for the Wilmington Blue Rocks and they were still a part of the Kansas City Royals organization, I heard a lot about this kid and I knew that he was going to be like the next big deal. And so far, he has lived up to that hype. He's just six one, signed a very big contract. I think it was the biggest in Royals history. I have to double check that, but Bobby uh, definitely has uh, a very very bright future ahead of him for sure. $288.7 million. <laughs> Crazy. It was an 11-year deal. Mike Trout and uh, his wife Jessica are welcoming another member of the team. How about that? That was just uh, announced by MLB on Twitter. There's Connor Joe who is 0 for 2. He popped out and grounded out. Eight seconds left on the pitch clock. Suarez gets set again above the belt this time. Kicks, delivers, throws a change up that misses low for a ball. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yep. The 1 1. Strike called on the inside corner at 90 miles per hour. 81 pitches. For Ranger, 52 have been strikes and 29 have been balls. The 1 2 on the way is just outside for ball two. Connor has popped out the second, also grounded out to first. It was a nice play by Bryce Harper to play it over towards the line. The 2 2 on the way, grounder, and this time Harper gets it again, and he'll just tag the bag. He was playing over towards the infield grass and had to. Jog on over towards his left side, towards the first base bag, and easily won that battle. There's one away. Connor's actually hit really well against the Phillies. I was looking at his stats today, but you wouldn't think that just coming into today. But congratulations to Mike Trout and his and his wife Jessica. Though it's pretty awesome. First pitch to Brian Reynolds is swung on and missed. He lined out to right and uh, struck out swinging as well. It was back in the third. And he takes the 0-1 for a chopper. That's hooked foul towards the third base side. 0-2 is the count. Ranger can't understand JT with the pitch comm settings, but now he does, and he steps into a the windup and the pitch. It's a pie for ball one. One ball, two strikes to Brian Reynolds. The pitch, fly ball, hit out towards the left center field alleyway on the run that was Merrifield, and he's there to make the catch. And there's two away. Marsh had to communicate with him, and Merrifield was like, I got it. I got it. No harm done. He just makes the catch. So two fly outs by Brian Reynolds and Kevin Hayes will be the next customer to bat. 
Cabrian Hayes, I should say. I didn't really say Kevin Hayes. <laughs> the ball is one strike. Two outs. Base is empty. We're in the top of the sixth inning. The 0-1 pitch. It's on the inside corner for a strike at the knees at 92 miles per hour. Shout out to the Trouts. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is really awesome. No balls. Two strikes in the pitch. Tapped foul over towards the third base dugout. So no balls, two strikes. Yeah, Bobby Witt's contract is 11 years for $288.7 million. And that is the longest contract in club history. Pitch is up high for ball one. And that also includes a three-year $89 million team option that would drive the value to more than $377 million and keep wit at, uh, with the Royals through the 2037 season. The one-two is up high. Junior Marte is warming up now in the Phillies bullpen. 92 pitches for Suarez. The 2-2 two -two downstairs for ball three. It's pretty interesting Like when you actually try to analyze, though, all these different types of contracts at the major league level and figure out the AAV. Three balls, two strikes, and the pitch just down low for ball four and a two-out walk that's drawn by Cabrian Hayes. You know, walk on over to first. And Edward Olivares will be coming up next. It was not a bad pitch thrown by Ranger. Just missed a little bit low. It was a good idea. Tried to get the call there, and Ranger was like, ah, ah. And he smiled and chuckled along as he went back towards the mound. Olivares steps into the box over on the right side. Suarez kicks steals and throws a strike at 93 miles per hour. I can't tell if the clouds are... are uh, are clear or not, but there doesn't really seem to be any sign of rain from every everywhere that I'm looking at at the ballpark. The 0-1 pitch just fouled back over towards the screen. I think that Rangers fastball today has been really on point, and the sliders, and the little changeup that he has has been pretty solid too. No balls, two strikes, two outs in the top of the sixth inning. Runner over at first. Phillies lead at 1-0, the 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss. Ranger Suarez gets a strikeout to end the inning, and we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. That's likely going to be it for Ranger, as he just throws under 100 pitches and gets his eighth strikeout of the day. And we go to the bottom of the sixth. Phillies lead at one zip. How about that? Um, what, did I just type this in for the wrong, uh, inning? I don't even know. Huh. What is this? Oh, T, what's going on? Rainy here in Philly. Lights are very bright at the stadium. It is rainy? Doesn't really look like it's raining on the, the picture. And you were right, likely the last inning for him. Not wrong. Eight strikeouts for Ranger. Hmm. Good job. <sighs> it's eight o'clock. Eight o'clock PM. Ranger has gone six innings allowed, no runs, two hits, two walks, eight strikeouts on ninety seven pitches. Yeah, he pitched really, really well. Um, and again, back to back, really good performances by him. That 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 is definitely a very good thing for the Phillies' uh, pitching staff. They really need that. I think that he has been a very good boost for them, and has really helped them out in so many different areas. And just uh, the pitching department as a starting pitcher, even in the bullpen, but. He allowed two earned runs against the Nationals his last time out and had four strikeouts, no walks allowed. And uh, even in the outing before that, he allowed three earned runs in five innings. It wasn't the sharpest. He did have seven strikeouts, but third outing, I think that he's getting better and better. You know? I really do. Hit the thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button, man. Come on, I'm sure we have a lot of people on here. 
How many of you have hit that thumbs up button? Are we even at 50 yet? It's Kyle Schwarber. You know, face off against Jones again and swing and miss at the off-speed pitch. It was a slider at 85. The count is one and one. They just came back from a break. And the pitch to Schwarber is another slider that is just right down the middle of the plate for a strike. It's now a one-two count. Trey Turner waits in the on-deck circle. The first pitch was a slider that barely missed. It looked like it was just in the zone, but... Hunter Wendelstadt did not agree with that call. One ball, two strikes, and the next pitch to Schwarber. It's a check swing pop-up over towards shallow left field, and making the over-the-shoulder catch is O'Neill Cruz. Just out towards the grass. It was funny because Brian Reynolds was sliding, and again, those types of plays, they're not as easy as it looks but you really need to make sure that you communicate with your teammates and figure out who's really going to go after it. And O'Neill Cruz did a good job at just getting underneath it, going over his uh, left shoulder and making the catch. So Schwarber is gone for the third time tonight, and Trey Turner will line this one sharply over to third base. It's played on the bounce, though, by Hayes, and he throws across the diamond in plenty of time for out number two. Sharp hit. Just right at Cabrian Hayes, though. Two gone. Mm. 69 people in the chat. All right, so Price is coming up to the plate. He has really struggled today. He's looking to try to change the ties. First pitch, it's... Lined foul over towards the left field side. First pitch swinging all the time. I mean, it was a good pitch to swing at, to be honest with you. It was right down the middle. I don't blame him for going after that. He just hit it really sharply on the ground towards Cabrian. The one to Harper was inside. And did they, they tried to swing to see if he went around. And the third base umpire, Marvin Hudson, said he did not. One and one is the count to Bryce. The pitch by Jared Jones is down low. And it's also inside as well for ball two. Two balls, one strike to Bryce Harper. Nobody on. Two outs in the bottom of the six. Phillies lead it one to nothing. The pitch, swing and a miss. So Jones has 71 pitches so far in five and two-thirds of an inning. He's looking to try to get Harper out here. The 2-2 two -two on the way to Bryce Harper, swinging a miss, and Harper chases after a slider that was in the dirt, and there is another strikeout for Jared Jones. Well, he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ranger Suarez, six innings, four hits allowed, and seven strikeouts on 72 pitches. As we go to the top of the seventh, Philly's still up one to nothing. The only mistake he allowed was a solo homer to Alec Bohm. Ranger, I thought, pitched pretty well, too. Only allowed two hits and two walks, so it was a good it was a good battle. Posing pitchers throw far fewer pitches than our starters. <laughs> Our stars only had 68 pitches uh, so far. Uh, we don't take any pitches. How many walks do we have? None. No walks. So, yeah, you're, you are right about that. You are definitely right about that. Um, ooh, that's tough. Huh. All right, let's... Uh, Let's pull up let's pull up the channel stuff while we're here. Do that right now. <laughs> I was looking at something, sorry about that. 
Uh, we got 71 people on here watching. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button, man. The name is Jason Joseph. This is Play by Play with JJ. I hope that you're all doing well. Um, Ranger only allowed two hits in uh, six innings of work and looked really sharp out there on the mound. The only hits he allowed were to uh, Henry Davis and Edward Olivares. They were both singles, but he had 97 pitches, had eight strikeouts in six innings. And looked really good. Only allowed two walks, two. One was to Cabrian Hayes. That was in the sixth inning. And the other one was to Cabrian Hayes back in the first. I'm so sick of our strategy or lack of strategy at the plate. <laughs> Junior Marte is going to go out there in relief for Ranger Suarez. In five games this season, uh, he has not allowed a run. in Five and two-thirds of an inning. And has four strikeouts and two walks allowed. Pones are batting 059 against him. I have to give credit where credit is due. This guy has really, and I know it's only five innings, but even just by watching him on the mound, you really see a big difference in his delivery. You see more uh, speed and more velocity on the pitches that he's been throwing. The slider looks a lot better as well. I think that the Phillies have done a good job of working with him, and he has also really made a lot of improvements on the mound as he as he got sent down to AAA. So, here's Andrew McCutcheon, and this one's grounded foul. Marte has stepped up. Yep, I was just giving him his flowers. Just giving him his flowers. Marte versus McCutcheon. McCutcheon's 0 for 2. It's behind in the count 0-1. Marte gets set at the letters, kicks, delivers, and it's just fouled off the knob of the bat. And McCutcheon, who had to take a... Wide step outside of the box because it was way inside. Tries to shake that one off. It's like, nope, do not come out there and hit me. And it literally just got the back of the bat. It wasn't even a, I don't even know if you call it. It was like a quarter of a swing. It just left his shoulder. The ball's two strikes. Marte kicks, delivers, and... Throws a slider that's outside for ball one. Huh. Marte batting 192 on the season. And the one-two pitch. Strike three called. And Andrew McCutcheon has gone down looking for the third time today. Somebody asked me what a backwards K was before. If you are still here, a backwards K literally is just like an old-time term for people that keep score. It's when you strike out looking, and the scorer's keepers, instead of writing it as a forwards K, which is a strikeout swinging signature, it's backwards because you struck out looking. Michael A. Taylor looks at the first pitch for a called strike at the knees. It's not a backwards strike, but imagine if that was even a term. <laughs> The pitch. It's in there for a strike. It was a slider that time. I wonder if people actually called it, like, back in the day, backward strikes. I don't think that they did. The 0-2, that one sails way outside from Junior Marte for a ball. Top of the seventh inning. one nothing Phillies lead. One out as well. And the count is now 1-2. and two. The pitch, just a little bit low. Zach, yeah, thanks a lot. I was wondering why it was different. Yep, it's like a, it's like one of those uh, old-time terms. Like catching a can of corn basically means like it's a routine fly ball and it's an easy catch. You're just reaching up to catch a can of corn. Like when you're at the grocery store. The one-two is inside for ball two. We say that sometimes on here. At least it's not a backwards O. That would, <laughs> how would you tell? <laughs> the 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss. And Junior Marte records his second straight strikeout in a row. That's a forwards K. And O'Neal Cruz, speaking of O, is coming up. But David Buchanan last night, he went eight innings, allowed five hits, two earned runs, four strikeouts, and only threw 90 pitches for the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. 
David Buchanan. I haven't heard that name in a while. O'Neill Cruz stares at a slider that misses outside and wide for ball one. Grounded out and struck out both his times today. The pitch on the way from Marte, swing and a miss. Count is even at one apiece. O'Neill, lifetime against Marte. Actually, he's never faced him before. It's the first time he's uh, facing him. The pitch outside and wide for ball two. Two balls, one strike to O'Neill Cruz. Marte looks over at third and now back to the plate. Gets set, kicks, steals, and throws it uh, just underneath the zone. Just under the zone for a ball. Eight seconds left on the pitch clock. Three balls, one strike. Marte kicks and deals and throws a slider at the knees for a strike. The good pitch there thrown by Marte. And again, we talk about the location, and we just talk about him firing on all cylinders. It seems like he's been a lot more comfortable, and maybe he has a good year for the Phillies. Maybe there's a lot of good things to come for him. Three balls, two strikes. The payoff pitch to O'Neill Cruz just tapped foul right behind the plate. Arte has thrown 16 pitches in this inning. Came on in relief for Ranger Suarez. Infield playing back over towards the... The grass in the outfield just in front of it on all cylinders. Three balls, two strikes, and the payoff pitch. Line drive out to center field for a base hit. It was a hanging slider. And Brandon Marsh fields it on a couple of bounces, and O'Neill Cruz ends a slump that he was in. He was 0 for 2 today, but was uh, really struggling in the last series. So he was 0 for his last 7, and he breaks that streak with a two-out single on a hanging slider. Jared Triolo will be coming up. The tying runs over at first. Can't believe that we're this late into the game. Two outs, a runner at first. Marte kicks, delivers. It's bounce foul over towards the third base side. Butterfly, what's going on, Butterfly? What's up, Snooter Prod? How you doing, man? How's everybody doing? <laughs> Got a powder blue bell. Out in right center. The ball is one strike, and the 0-1 is served over towards the right field side, but it goes out of play, and it'll find the seats. That'll make the count now 0-2. Did that fan catch that? I don't know. I don't know. Five seconds left on the pitch clock. The 29-year-old Junior Marte on the bump. Throw back over to first and almost got uh, O'Neal Cruz, but he just got back in there safely. It was a good swipe, too, by Harper, but O'Neal was pretty fast on the base pads. No balls, two strikes. Marte, 29 years old, from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. In the next pitch, there's a chopper that's hit over towards the third base side. It's foul, though, barely. And we'll do it again. It's a nice aerial shot that they're showing us on uh, the NBC Sports app. No balls, two strikes. Cruz over at first. Two outs. We're in the top of the seventh. Phillies lead it one to nothing. Marte kicks and deals and just misses. That slider missed by a whisker. Was just a hair outside by the skin of its teeth. <laughs> Literally. And that was the right call, too. Davis waits in the on-deck circle. The one-two on the way is low and outside again to make the count even at two apiece. Triolo grounded out to first to start off the third inning, and then he grounded out to third. To uh, round it out to the pitcher in the fifth. 2-2 two, two on the way. Strike three called. JT knew that O'Neill Cruz was going, but it was a good pitch right down the heart and soul of the plate. 
And that's how we end the inning. It is stretch time at the bank. One to nothing, Phillies lead. And they're coming back up to bat. Good job by Marte, man. How are the Flyers beating the Rangers, but we lost 9-3 to to Montreal? Yeah, I know. They still technically have a chance to get in, but... It's tough, man. I've, I don't want to say I've given up on them, but I've lost a lot of hope. Um, I'm going to ask you a Phillies trivia question. We're going to do our Phillies trivia question now. All right, we'll do that right now. Uh, where did I put my book? There it is. All right, let's ask a Phillies trivia question. If you get it right, you'll hear this sound. If you get it wrong, you'll hear this sound. Okay. Uh, let's do this one. Uh, maybe not that one. All right. There is an easy one. Uh, how many saves did Brad Lidge collect for the Phillies in 2008? How many saves did Brad Lidge collect for the Phillies in 2008? How many? I was just wondering that myself. Yeah, we're not going to get in. I've lost all hopes of Snooter. How many saves did Brad Lidge collect for the Phillies in 2008? Anybody know the answer? 40. That is incorrect. Not that off, though. 41. That is correct. I give you credit for at least guessing. You were really, really close, but you were just one off, my guy. Close, but no cigar. <laughs> Good job, though. And Snooter said 43. That was that was a good guess. You guys you guys did a good job. But Chase, what's up, man? Chase got it. Good job, bro. Trey T takes a ball and the next pitch. Line drive into left field for a base hit. It drops right in front of Brian Reynolds. JT rounds first, but it'll just jog back or backpedal, I should say, back towards the first base bag. And he gets on. And here's Alec Bohm coming up next. Bohm at a Shot out towards the, the Phillies' bullpen. That was his first homer of the season. And he gave the Phillies a one nothing lead. Jones was just 74 pitches. Phillies lead at one to nothing, and Boehm will foul the first pitch off. It was thrown right on the tee to him, just right down the middle of the play, and then he was late. His average now up to 273. Insurance run over at first base as of now. That's JT Realmuto. Three seconds left on the pitch clock, and the 0-1 is popped up. But it'll hook foul and go out of play well beyond the first base dugout and into the seats. Count is 0-2. Ranger Suarez got the start today, and he pitched really well for the Phillies again. Only allowed uh, four hits, or sorry, two hits. Four base runners. That's two walks and eight strikeouts. The pitch. Chopped foul towards the third base side. Junior Marte just uh, struck out the side in the top of the seventh inning. Only allowed one hit. And again, he pitched really, really well, too. The 0-2 pitch. Good take by Bohm. It was a slider. It looks good to swing at, but... Ended up being low, and it was pretty deceiving. Colin Holderman making his return for the Pirates. Was out for a little bit of time. He's back in there, warming up in the bullpen. The 1-2 on the way, swing and a miss, and Jones records his eighth strikeout of the day. Alex just, uh, I gotta tell you that that slider has been very... Uh, well located tonight. A lot of chase, chase, uh, a lot of high chase rates. I can't speak today on that pitch. Brandon Marsh will come in towards the box and he looks at a 
curveball that misses outside. Jeff Hoffman getting loosened up in the Phillies bullpen to pitch the top of the eighth inning, most likely. JT over at first, got on with a single. The pitch by Jones misses low and away. And now we have a timeout called by Henry Davis as he wants to take off the mask and talk things over with his pitcher. That's what he'll do. On the other hand, if we don't score, you're to blame. Okay. I'll take the blame. I will definitely do that. So it's two balls, no strikes to Brandon Marsh. On deck is Nick Castellanos. Jared Jones wanted to look over his game logs real quickly. 2-0 pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. He did have 10 strikeouts against the Miami Marlins and just allowed three hits on three runs. So he's been doing pretty well. That was his first time out. 2-1 pitch upstairs for a ball three. And then in the second outing, even though that they lost 5-2, to two, he allowed just two earned runs and had seven strikeouts in six innings of work. Only six hits allowed, too. He's only 22 years old, mind you. Three balls, one strike to Brandon Marsh, and the 3 1 pitch swing and a miss. That was ball four, and he swung on and missed at that to make the count full. That's not impressive. It's Miami. Well, who would have thought that Miami would have actually really gotten off to the slow start? That was at the, literally the very beginning of the season. In the moment, that's pretty cool. 3-2 is, well, there's a throwback over to first base. It's not in time. It was at the beginning of the season. If it was now, I'd say that maybe, yes, like you are correct, but that's that was uh, the second day. <laughs> Payoff pitch on the way. Popped up, hit out towards left field. It's carrying, though, going back towards the track, and it hits off the top of the wall and goes out towards the left center field alleyway. So Marsh gets into second base. JT comes home, and the Phillies have a 2-0 lead. Oh, my gosh. I thought it was just going to be a routine fly ball out to left center field, but the wind just kept blowing that thing, and it landed off the top of the wall, and it's an RBI double for Brandon Marsh. Well, it wasn't even a full swing, but he just was able to get a good piece of the barrel on it. And it hit off literally the top of the fence. Wow. So that's how they go up two to nothing. And it's on an RBI opposite field double by Brandon Marsh. Still in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Phillies are going to review this to see if this is a home run. It's not a challenge. It's just a replay review. I don't know. I can't believe that that thing had a chance of going out. I really can't, but. So, Wendell Stott has the earpiece in, and John Tumpain is accompanying him to see what the call is going to be. Nonetheless, that was uh, much needed for the Phillies, for sure. Literally hit right into... The guard, it, it hit the garden bed, so I think that that's a home run. If it hits off the front of the fence, it's not a home run, and it's just uh, a live ball. But if it hits the garden bed, then it is. They rule it as a home run. <laughs> so Brandon Marsh gets a two-run homer. And the Phillies take a 3 nothing lead. <laughs> wow. Well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> so they overturned the call. It looked like it just hit the flower bed. I thought that that's what it did. And it did. So it's 3 nothing, Phillies. And we have a pitch and change. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to take a very quick step off. I will see you very soon.
Sandra will never question you again. That's funny. Hit that thumbs up button, man, and hit that subscribe button. We got 73 people on here watching, and I'm sure that not all 73 people have have uh, hit that thumbs up button, bro. We have 51 likes. That means 22 of you. Come on, man. Disrespect. I know that not all of you are watching, though. It's a marsh mash by the caveman. I don't really call that a mash, but it's a homer, technically. So, <laughs> it's a two-run homer. Great. I swear I have magical powers, Snooter. I th I think that I think that you do, bro. I really do. Um, just wanted to give another shout out to uh, Kathy Ann if she's tuning in. You know, we're all thinking about you. And while we're in this break, I wanted to just uh, say, uh, you know, I just wanted to give thoughts and prayers, of course, and uh, just thank you so much for tuning in. If you are tuning in, and for always being here, so that's all I wanted to say. Wishing you nothing but good health and uh, lots of love and happiness, for sure. We'll take the wind all day. Yep. I could literally just hit. It did. That's funny. So, Jared Jones' his day is done, so he gets charged with three runs. And there's Nick Castellanos as he rips this one high and deep out to left field, and it is a foul ball. Castellanos thought that he may have gotten all of it, but just lined foul. Elder U says, can't wait to see the highlights on YouTube. Marsh has been our best hitter so far, says Jamie. Yep. Yes. No ball is one strike to Nick Castellanos, and the 0-1 swing and a miss on a sweeper at 84 miles per hour. If we don't stop ringing the bell, there are gonna, uh, there OA going to be another track in it. I don't know what that means. The O2 pitch. There's a fly ball hit out towards the right center field alleyway, and it's dropped by the center fielder. Wow! And Castellanos will try to dive in the second. The throw is not in time. Taylor and Edward Oliveris could not communicate. They collided with each other. And that was just poor communication by the both of them. And Nick Castellanos gets over to second. <laughs> is there like a crack in the bell? Is, is maybe maybe that's what it is because I think that that the last time I heard it, I may have to re-record that. Huh. Well, there you go. Oh my gosh, uh, JJ, so very blessed. To still be able to breathe and be alive. Thanks for the shout out. Of course. Of course. All right, so Colin Olderman is out there to pitch. And the count is 1 0 to Bryson Stott. Let's see what they rule that as. I'm curious. So Stott's over at the plate. The 1 0 swinging a fly ball drilled out to deep right field. It's deep and it is gone. Bryson Stott. Able to snap out of a funk. And the Phillies take a 5 nothing lead in the bottom of the seventh. Ring the bell, Bryson Stott. <laughs> wow. A hanging changeup, I think that's what it was. I have to look at the replay again, but... So Stott just hits a big shot. It was 402 feet out to right field, and the Phillies take a 5 nothing lead. Here comes Whit Merrifield, still one out in the bottom of the seventh, and he swings and misses at the first pitch. So they ruled uh, Castellanos, they, they, they ruled that as an error. It was a fielding error by the center fielder, Taylor. And then Cassius was safe on the air over at second. He crushed that thing, man. Merrifield traps this one over towards the second base side, and the flip over to first is in time. Bryson Stott, man, just got a nice piece of the of a swing on that pitch and just kept his head down and drilled it out to right field. Man. Merrifield grounded out, and there's two away.
And now Kyle Schwarber will come back up to bat. So we've had two two two-run homers in this inning alone. The Phillies have hit three today. First pitch was a strike. The Schwarber. Holderman gets set, kicks, delivers, and there's a pop-up out towards the third base side. Out in left field, shallow left field that is, and Cabrian Hayes gets under it, and the inning comes to an end as he makes the catch. The Phillies get two two two-run homers, though. One from Brandon Marsh and the other from Bryson Stott, and they're up five to nothing as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Schwarbaum right here. Oh, you jinxed it. You jinxed it, my guy. <laughs> Stott hammered it. Yeah, it did. It was good. Wish it was a better call, but pop out over to third. And now we're going to the eighth inning. Hoffman, is he still going to come in now? That's the question, man. Is he still going to come in? Mike. Bro, what's been going on? I saw that you tried to join the Discord the other night. I wanted to get you to come on, but I couldn't. But but you didn't want to stay, my guy. I wanted to hear what you had to say. Hopefully we'll get you to come on soon, man. Who's next pitching? I don't know. I can't see. I'm not at the game. Does it look like I know who's next pitching? Jeff Hoffman was warming up in the pen, but that was like when they were up one to nothing. That could change now. I don't know. I'll just uh, I'll just take my hidden binoculars from a Citizens Bank Park. <laughs> That's what I'll do. Okay, so Nick Nelson's coming in. Okay. Nick Nelson's coming up. I figured I figured that he was going to come in. I figured it was going to be Nick Nelson. Mm. Bats are heating up, says Jamie. I don't know if they're heating up, but... I mean, that, that swim by Stott was beautiful. I can't deny that. Uh, Celtics are losing 69-48. Mike Green says I stink at it. Lol, I'm try I'm practicing to join you. I didn't I really didn't know how to join in. I'm learning. <laughs> I got you, man. You don't have a hidden camera in the bullpen? Nope, I don't. I don't. I'm not the Houston Astros, my guy. But that's actually out in center field. From the top of the eighth inning, Nelson on the bump, and the first pitch is in there for a strike. So Nick Nelson will face 9-1-2 and two to start off the eighth inning. Henry Davis singled in the third. The 0-1 is just low for a ball. That's the only hit that he, that he uh, has gotten today. Grounded out to third his last time up. Pitch by Nelson. It's fouled literally off the front kneecap of Henry Davis. And, man, he has to take a step out. I think it hit the top of his front big toe and then just ricocheted off of that and just hit the kneecap. Actually, no, it was the back foot. And then hit the front of the kneecap. Yikes. One ball, two strikes. And the one-two on the way. Fouled off towards the right field side. Nelson does have a 6.75 ERA in one and a third of an inning. But I guess if there's any spot you want to put him in, it's this one. So that way he can try to prove himself and maybe give you a good productive inning in a non-stressful situation. The one-two pitch on the outside corner. Cold strike three. And Nick Nelson able to get his first strikeout. That's now four of the last batters that have struck out or have struck out now for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And there's the first out of the top of the eighth. Go back to the top of the order, and Rowdy Telez will be pinch hitting for Connor Joe. Nelson throws a slider upstairs. Telez is a pinch hitter, has five homers and 17 RBI, but just sitting 196. The pitch outside for ball two. Hunter Stratton 
will be warming up in the bullpen. Right behind his catcher, it'll be Hunter Wendelstadt calling the balls and the strikes. So two hunters that are literally across from each other. Pitch is fouled off. Pirates have had no extra base hits tonight. Just three singles and no more than one runner in an inning. The 2-1 pitch on the way. That is popped up a mile high. Marsh comes jogging in, stops, waits for it, and he'll make the catch. And there's two away. That Telez just got way, way under that. Now Brian Reynolds will come on up. Huh. Nelson's ERA now at 5.40. No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about as a pinch hitter, I said. Here's Brian Reynolds, who will just smash this one back up the middle for a base hit. That was a screamer that was just hit back up right behind the bag. And Reynolds, just able to get his uh, first hit of the day. He lined out two times, and he struck out in the third. That time he didn't miss a beat on that fastball. And Cabrian Hayes is coming up. He's walked twice and has struck out once. Nelson gets set at the belt, kicks, fires, and it's fouled off the foot, the front foot of Hayes. He's behind in the count, 0-1. He's walked twice. He's in 3.06 on the season. 27-year-old from Tomball, Texas. The 0-1 on the way, swing and a miss. What's his contract? He's getting $70 million. Wow. Eight-year, $70 million contract. No balls, two strikes. The 0-2 on the way. Strike three called on the outside corner. And Hayes goes down looking, and we go to the bottom of the eighth. Phillies are looking to take game one. And before they go out there to pitch the ninth, they got to come back up to bat. I'm in Tomball, Texas right now. Wow, that's cool. That's peanuts if you think about it. <laughs> smash that. Smash the bat and the like. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's cool. I like that a lot. We got 77 people on here that are tuning in that are Phillies freaks. If you are a Phillies freak or if you're a baseball freak, make sure you guys hit the thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 1,950 subscribers if we haven't done so already. Again, if you are tuning in, the name is Jason Joseph. We uh, go by JJ on here. This is play-by-play -play with JJ. And, yeah, I started this channel 15 months ago. Been calling games. Want to do broadcasting full-time. I really do. It's my passion, and I love it very, very much. And we are really just trying to grow a community on here. And take advantage of this digital medium because it's a lot of fun. It really is. And it's very life-changing. And you can see the positive impact that this has on a lot of things that we are doing. So we're trying to take advantage of the, of the digital media sphere. And uh, we're trying to grow a community. We're trying to grow a family. So, we again, we call Sixers basketball, Phillies baseball, and Eagles football games. And we try to give you a radio play-by-play -play of everything. 80 people on here and only 64 likes. Come on, people. And again, feel free to like. Feel free to subscribe. You guys don't have to if you guys don't like it or if you want to just test it out. You're more than welcome to. Some of you are not even literally near your phones right now because you're busy working. So that's understandable. We have a very nice home stand here. We do. Uh, good chance to put some wins together and gain some momentum. Oh, I thought you were talking about us. I thought you were talking about... I thought you were talking about us as like a 
as like a JJ Nation or a Phillies Nation or whatever. But yes, I understand what you mean. The Phillies have a nice homestand here. They do. 10-game homestand. But we have an incredible homestand fan base. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, no balls, one strike to Trey Turner. And Turner will ground this one over towards the third base side, gobbled up by Hayes. Sidearm throw to first, and Turner is out. One away. Yo, just had the best uh, stream of my... The, the best stream in my life. Can't wait to tell you about it. Dude, that's sick. That's sick, man. Uh, Snooter says you should try out hockey. New uh, new area in sports. Uh, more fans. More people hearing about you. New area in sports. I would love that. First pitch swung on and missed for a strike. Are you talking about hockey like on here? Like talking about like doing Flyers games on here? Because... I've tried doing it, like, on the monitor before. It is really, really hard to actually give, like, a full detail play-by-play -play because it's all so fast, and the camera can't catch everything. No balls. One strike. The pitch to Bryce Harper is fouled off. But, yeah, I would, uh, I was thinking about doing it, but then I thought to myself, you know what, we're just going to do Sixers stuff this year because the Sixers are, A, the more popular team, but also as the 0-2 to Harper is taken way up high and outside for a ball. Hunter Stratton's on the mound, by the way. He has a 1.8 ERA, and opponents are batting 300 against him in five innings. But uh, it takes a lot on the vocal courts. One way, if, if I do one team or the other, it really does. And that's why I'm okay with baseball, is the 1-2 is way up high and outside. I'm okay with baseball because it doesn't take a lot of my vocals, even though it is every day. But yeah, I would like to, eventually I would like to do some more hockey games. Two balls, two strikes to Bryce Harper, and the 2-2 two -two on the way, swinging a foul tip into the glove for strike three, and Harper is down on strikes for the second at bat in a row. But yeah, I would, I, I would like to do it. I think that that's a really cool idea. The Pirates this season have allowed nine homers in 12 games, which is the second fewest in the National League. But tonight they've allowed three. Here's JT, who will step into uh, to the batter's box, and he takes a strike just at the knees. JT singled in the seventh and scored a run. His average now sits at 293. Stratton with the one with the 0-1 delivery, swing and a miss. Oh man, decided to go up high, and it was just uh, swung on a miss pretty badly by JT. Bone weights in the on deck circle. Pirates in there, top of the ninth inning. They'll have four, five, and six due up. That's Olivares, McCutcheon, and Taylor. The 0-2 on the way to Riamuto, lined foul towards the right field side. Phillies in their powder blue uniforms. They just uh, won the series against the Cardinals. They stand at 500. They're seven and they're six and six on the season. The 0-2 on the way, high again and inside for ball one. Huh. Well, this weather wasn't supposed to be nice, but the rain has really held out. The pitch outside for ball two. It was way outside. Two balls, two strikes. JT now on a three game hitting streak. Or a two-game hitting streak, I should say. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Swing and a miss. And JT strikes out. And that's the end of that. So back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the bottom of the eighth inning. And we go to the top of the ninth. Phillies need three more outs to complete the shutout against the Pirates. 20 to 25 years ago, all babies were named Hunter. You got Hunter 
how many hunters do I know? So I know Hunter Brody, another uh, Philly's uh, content, uh, Philly, Philly sports content creator. I don't know him personally, but he uh, did go to Rowan. So we have Hunter Brody. We have Hunter Steelman, who's on here sometimes. I don't know if he's tuning in. Shout out to Hunter Steelman. Uh, who else do we have? We have Hunter uh, Hunter Pence. Hunter Pence is a good one. I almost said Goodwill Hunting, but that's not. That has nothing to do with it. Uh, Hunter Hunter Strickland. <laughs> remember that from? Uh, of course, remember the the brawl that he had with Bryce Harper. What's another Hunter? Hunter Renfro. Both Hunter Renfros. Yeah, I guess that, that is a pretty popular name, huh? Hunter Renfro. Yep, both the 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 football. Receiver and the baseball player, Hunter, Hunter Renfro. Where is Hunter Renfro now? If you are new to the channel, I know where you guys are. You guys are on here. Hit that thumbs up button and hit that, and hit that subscribe button. Hunter Stratton. <laughs> yeah, that's another Hunter. Yep. Are we just naming all the Hunters that we know? All the people that are named Hunter? He's on the He's on the Royals. Okay. I remember he was on the Red Sox for a little bit of time. Where's the football player now at? Yeah, yeah, you're right. He is on the Royals. How about the wide receiver? He's a free agent. Okay. Uh, all right, top of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Pirates. Phillies looking for their final three outs to start off the series. And Nick Nelson... Do you believe it? He's actually going to pitch the ninth inning to start things off here. Hunter Helmsley. Okay. Top of the ninth. Nelson gets set at the belt, kicks, deals, and throws a ball that's inside for ball one. After this game is done, I am going to be tuning into the Knicks-Celtics uh, game. The one no pitch, there's a little chopper over towards the third base side. It's going to stay fair, and Bohm's just going to eat it up. Nothing he could do about that. It's an infield single. I am going to tune into the Celtics. Uh, I am going to tune into the Celtics uh, Knicks game because I want to see. It's the last week of the NBA season, regular season, and I am curious to see who the Sixers uh, are going to play as their first round opponent. Play by play with Hunter. <laughs> here's McCutcheon and they'll pop this one up over towards the first base side and foul ground Harper has it though just over towards the left side of the bag and he'll make the easy catch and there's one away why is the Celtics game so important it's really like not as important but I just want to we'll talk about it at the end of the game we'll talk about it at the end of the game literally Foul out to first. All right, so Michael A. Taylor is coming up. He has a hat trick of strikeouts. And uh, O'Neill Cruz waits in the on deck circle. First pitch is downstairs for ball one. Taylor versus Nelson. Nelson has 17 pitches. He's able to do a good job in the top of the eighth. The 1 0 again is outside for ball two. Here's a stat for you, 1,709 1, professional baseball players that came out of PA, highest state in, New, in the U.S. How about that? Two balls, no strikes, and the pitch is in there for a strike. McCutcheon didn't strike out looking. Did I just say that he did? He struck out looking two times. This time, though, he fouled out to first. 2-1 pitch. Line drive in the right field for a base hit. Castellanos gets over to it, and runners are going to go from station to station. So, over to second goes Oliveris, and Taylor gets on with a single. I said that Taylor has a hat trick of strikeouts. I did say that. Calling it, never mind. Hmm. O'Neill Cruz now steps in. The bat on the left side. 
And Nelson takes a very quick sigh of relief. Gets set just below the letters and throws a strike at 94 miles per hour. Ugh. O'Neill batting 300 with two homers, four RBI. Singled his last time up. The 0 1 pitch. There's a chopper. It actually hit the front of the foot of O'Neill Cruz. So it's a foul ball. I was just pointing out McCutcheon improving. Oh. Okay. I didn't understand the context there. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't understand that context. Still catching along. (laughs) Owen, two is the count to O'Neill Cruz. Nelson gets set, fires, and throws it wide and upstairs. So the count is one and two. Better have somebody warming up. I agree. Eight seconds left on the pitch clock. The one two on the way. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout for Nelson. Decided to go with a curveball, and it was literally right down the pipe. And O'Neill Cruz, not able to get anything. He came up short, or came up empty on that one. Two outs in the top of the ninth. Two runners on for the Pirates, and all is up to Jared Triolo. First pitch is down low. And the count is 1-0. In the on-deck circle, it's Henry Davis. Triolo's 0-3 for 3 with, the ground, with two ground outs and a strikeout. One ball, no strikes. And the next pitch, strike one called on the inside corner at the knees. Larry, please give out the ERA for Nelson if he gets out of this inning. <laughs> Nelson gets set, kicks, fires the pitch, swing and a miss. And the Pittsburgh Pirates, they're down to their final strike. Fans standing on their feet, rooting on for Nick Nelson. The 1-2, wide for ball two. So Olivares is over at second. Taylor's over at first. Both of them got on with singles. Phillies lead it five to nothing. And they're looking to take game one to start off this four-game stretch against the Pittsburgh Pirates. The 2-2 on the way. Down low for ball three. And the count is full. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button, man. Come on. Big payoff pitch coming up. Nelson takes a sigh of relief and the 3-2 on the way. Line drive in the right field for a base hit. Backhanded by Castellanos. One run's going to come in to score. And it's now a 5-1 game on the opposite field. RBI single by Jared Triolo. And the Pirates are still alive. Now Jose Alvarado is getting loosened up in the Phillies bullpen. Just left a hanging fastball right out towards the center of the plate, and Triolo went the opposite way with it and was able to drive home Edward Oliveris. So Taylor's at third, Triolo's at first, and Davis is up to bat. There goes the shutout, too. And now Caleb Cotham is going to go out there to try to calm Nick Nelson down. I'm just a little shocked that in this situation, you leave Nick Nelson uh, out there to pitch the ninth inning. I'm not saying that that was a wrong decision. I'm just I'm just curious to see like what's, what goes on through Rob's mind because he cares about people's pitch counts, some of them, but then he just, with others, he, he just lets them, seems like that they have more flexibility. Jumped from a 3.0 to a 6.0. <laughs> So Alvarado warming up in the pen. And Cotham goes back to the dugout. 89 people watching. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. 
Let's get to 1,950 subscribers. First pitch to Davis. Popped foul, and it hits the net behind the plate. Henry hitting a buck 71 and slashing 295 with a 222 slugging per or yeah, slugging percentage, that is. The 0 1 on the way. Oh, that just missed. It was a little bit high. And according to StatCast, that was the right call. One ball, one strike. Taylor's at third. Triolo's at first. Throw back to first base. Not in time. Harper didn't even tag Triolo. Nothing like that. Pirates got a run back on an RBI single by Jerry Triolo. At the dishes, Davis. On deck is Rowdy Telez. The 1-1 one, one on the way. Popped up over towards the third base side in foul ground. Boom slides and he makes the catch. And that's how the Phillies end the game. Nice play by Bohm. He made a couple of really good plays defensively over at third. He is the player of the game because he also hit the solo homer out the center. And the Phillies take game one of this series against the Pirates. Tip of the cap, too, to Nick Nelson for finding a way to get out of that jam. And Nelson celebrates as Henry Davis knocks the bat down with a lot of frustration. So that puts the Phillies now at 7-6 and six on the season. And they are now one game above 500. Suarez, again, the player of the game on the pitching side of stuff. He went six innings. He allowed two hits, two walks, and had eight strikeouts. He was really terrific today. I really liked how he was commanding the fastball. The slider and the off-speed pitches really looked good as well. There were a couple times where he did get a couple of calls, like the one against McCutcheon in the first inning or the second inning. That was a pretty, uh, you know, he got the call from Hunter Hunter. Hunter Wendell stat, but he did good. He, he really did. He struck out McCutcheon uh, two times. He also struck out Taylor twice as well. Um, he had a really good, uh, uh, it was a really good pitching sequence to Brian Reynolds too in that third inning. So that was a good win. Good win by your Philadelphia Phillies. So yes, we are over 500. W's in the chat, man. Brandon Marsh is being interviewed. We got 77 people on here watching. Again, we are going to be looking at the rest of the Boston-New York game. And uh, what we'll probably do is I'll make a separate stream. We'll come on for the fourth quarter. I'm going to take a quick step off. And we'll just have a Celtics-Knicks fourth quarter watch party, all right? I'll be back in just a little bit. But I love you all. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow for the Sixers game or back in action tonight when I return in literally 10 minutes. All right. Love you guys. Catch you on the next one. Good night. I got to go, JJ. See you next time. Good call. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. And Ranger, we trust. <laughs> yep, for sure. All right. Good night.